other than uh, Peg is here. Okay. If we, are we expecting Peg, or don't you know? No. She said she's not. Uh, I'm not aware that she's not coming. Okay. Um, let's go down the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting. Any um, additions, changes, modifications? <coughs> Not all on um, entertain a motion to accept. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Okay, Joanne, second. I second. Okay, take your choice, Al. Arrow. Arrow. Right. Uh, those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Presentation of bills and accounts. I move we accept the bills and accounts as presented. I second. Okay. Those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Okay. Cooper Lake improvements. Okay, I'm meeting with Schnabel in their offices in Clifton Park tomorrow. Um, since I'm going by anyway, um, we have a meeting at 1 o'clock scheduled. All the people from CDM and from Schnabel are going to be there. We're going to go over their findings to date and their recommendations and where they are. So I'll have much more information moving forward for the main meeting. Okay. Uh, you know, I've been talking, obviously, I've been talking to them here at, the, at our conference, and you know, Greg has not indicated there's any, any issues. Um, they're on schedule. You know, they've got some preliminary design things, you know, work done, and, and they're just looking for uh, some input on, you know, some things where, where we are. So, so the, nec the next thing that we're looking for is them to actually submit some type of uh, plans? Yes. Okay. We'll have them for, and, and after my meeting tomorrow, I'll know if they're at, you know, 60%. Where are they on that, you know, on that percentage? And then they'll submit them, obviously, for our review. Right. And then we'll also, um, he'll have to submit them to, I'm thinking, both DEC and DOH. That's one of the questions that I have to tease out tomorrow, you know, since it's a, you know, it's our water supply. DEC is going to have most of the review, but... I think I think it's going to be some some type of a joint review, but I'll know more about that tomorrow. Okay, and we haven't heard anything back from DEC regarding the submission of our schedule. No, no, but I don't expect to hear. Okay, good enough. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Uh, Five eighty-seven roundabout. Um, Dennis and Dennis Larios and and his team had some conversations back and forth, and this morning. We all just got 90% design documents from DOT, which um, you know we all got electronically in five different emails. So I'm not in a position to look at them here, um, mm -hmm. but you know I chatted with Dennis about it, and they'll be printing out copies for us to look at, and we'll be having a conversation about it. And but it looks, from what I can see, it looks like they're ready to go to bid. Is there a time frame that we have to get back to them in regards to accepting? Uh, uh, Yes, June, I think it's June 28th, if I'm not mistaken. There, there's a deadline in June, and he was very good about, you know, we've got over two months to look at these, and they're going to go to bid June 28th, and they're going to receive bids and award them in the September time frame. So we'll have, um, uh, one, that's, I don't think it'll take us very long to look these over and say, yep, that's exactly what we want you to do. Um, and then... I'm sure there'll be some a little bit back and forth about the actual bid specification. Um, we have to review those, make sure they've got all the stuff that we want, and um, and it's a question of just building the darn thing. Okay. Um, SCADA system. Um, the day after, remember last meeting I said we'd have a pool for a short level, we got it the next day. Um, the CDM is finalizing the bid documents, and we should be out to bid shortly. Um, uh, we didn't. We submitted the subsequent grant under the WEA program for the balance of the SCADA. That's why in that my notes I, I mentioned, you know, that we won't probably have enough to complete the project with the available funding. But we will be able to. Uh, I will be submitting the grant. Alan and I had submitted a grant last year with Tom's help. And we got denied, and we subsequently found out that they did not believe that we submitted a complete package, that the resolution for the bond was missing. But in point of fact, it was there. So I think all I really need to do is talk to them, make sure they have that piece, 
after they found that piece or resend it to them, and then I think we should be able to be considered for this latest round. And do you have any idea when they'll actually act on that or date deadline for that? Yeah, I'll help me out here, but I think it's usually in the applications are due the end of June. Um, they award or you notify sometime in the October, November. Right. And they actually make the, make the announcements in December. Yeah. For the following spring. Yes. Okay. And so we have the, the remainder or some more of that work in that. Right. Yeah. And, and what we agreed that we would do, the most, what made the most sense and to leverage that money to the fullest extent possible, would be to um, do all the programming for the entire system, buy as much hardware and, and the, the components that we could afford out there, and we'll get a significant portion of it done, and then as funding becomes available and we're successful in, this, in a grant application, that would be great. But if not, we could do it over time as, as operation funds allow. Okay. So it's, it's a very scalable thing. Okay, uh, moving on. Um, Benny Water UPS project. Yesterday, the Mitsubishi was there. They fired it up. Um, CDI was there and witnessed that. Um, Derek brought in all, all of his folks and they got training. So that was done. The last piece that remains is that was very successful. I was chatting with Derek during the day. Um, and the last piece that remains is the fire pump, the correction of the code violation. And there was a little bit of a disagreement in how that should be accomplished um, with the design engineer wanting it done one way and Jim Carrey, our contractor, suggesting an alternative means that would mean less downtime for us. And one of the key things for us is we must maintain coordination and to do the work the way the engineer was proposing it, it was going to be, it could potentially be a day where, the, where we wouldn't have a tower there. And um, that would mean, you know, a generator and a, you know, a temporary chlorine pump and, it, you know, it just wasn't going to work. So I guess yesterday we were, they were pretty much at odds with the approach until they all were in the same place at the same time and they clearly understood what Jim was proposing and that actually is how we're going to do it. So there's a spare conduit up there and he's going to pull all the wires ahead of time and then he's just a... Central Hudson will kill the power and he'll immediately reconnect it so our downtime will be, you know, maybe an hour as opposed to Central Hudson has to come back a day later to redo it. Okay. So it, it, we got a good solution. And yeah, Derek was there and was aware of, of what our concerns were and, um, you know, it all worked out. It, it's amazing what happens. Somebody see what you're talking about, how that kind of did, did we ever determine um, who was responsible for that pump being wired the wrong way or creating that violation from the Benny Water work we had just done a couple years previous? I'm not. I, I, I have not gone through the spec and looked at that again, but that's something that I think Jim and I need to take a look at, and I think we were, we were actually talking about that you know, earlier in the day when we were sitting here, because okay. Jim was also at the conference um, representing DEP, so we were here chatting about that, and we both need to get that done. We both okay, need yeah, to look at that and see whether it was the uh, contractor or whether it was the design itself. Okay, good. Yeah, we need to follow up on that from yeah, yeah, the previous discussion. Okay. Uh, transmission name project. Um, I, I, it looks like with Tom's estimate, initially his estimate was around 2.7, um, but we, we sat down and we looked at some things and we made some decisions about um, the type of valves and where they're going to be and, and the, how many bolts they're going to have. And ultimately the final project, and it, they think the probable construction cost for it the Jockey Hill valve and the transmission main itself and that will be around 2.2 million, which really looks like it'll come in with the available funds, the 
authorization that we have. Now, the truth is, you don't know until you get bit. Mm-hmm. Um, the piece that we haven't designed yet is the, um, the relining of the, the transmission main above the plant that we, that we had some a pressure water hammer transient a pressure transient that kind of disrupted that main um I've talked to Ralph Swenson and as soon as we get spring mm-hmm. I think maybe it's coming someday um they're, we're going to dig a couple of holes and they're actually going to TV that line for us and so then Tom and his folks at CDM will, will actually know you know did it just break in one place and we repaired it and we have another big joint? Or did all the joints blow? Is there, or is there another break? So we'll actually, we'll, we'll be in a better position to um, see how we want to proceed with that. So where are we with plans then on the valve part portion of that? On the what portion? The, the valve, the main portion. Oh, oh they're, they're, um, they're, 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 uh, they're almost ready to submit those two portions to DOH for approval. Okay. In fact, that's their next step, is they're preparing their submission for DOH. Okay. And who knows if it's going to fall within what we have allocated or what the, right? We don't know. Right. We, I mean, and Tom said, Tom from CDM, he, he, he never want to be the low bidder when you give him a probable construction cost. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we won't know until we get bids, but um, you know he, there, he thinks he's got a pretty good handle on what it should cost. And I, I, I don't, I can't be any, you know, the bids are the bids. Okay. But he's hoping we don't have a problem. And so plans will go to DOH shortly, and then after their yeah. review and approval, then we go out the bid and we'll. Well, um, yeah, yeah. Figured maybe by the fall things will go out the bid. Pardon me? Oh yeah, yes, yes, I would think so. I mean, it depends on, on how fast DOH can turn things around. Mm-hmm. Um, but Mike, Mike's office, his his group in the design section is usually pretty efficient. Okay. You know, they're they're, they're you know the Brock, Brock Rogers up there seems to do all of our plans in this area, and so he's usually pretty timely in getting questions back to Tom or the engineer and, and that back and forth. So, um, you know, I would imagine a month is probably a reasonable time for them to, to get their review and approval, assuming that, you know, the plans are in good condition when they get them and they don't need a lot of additions or changes. They're also, they're also uh, we're working through the environmental, the rest, whatever remaining environmental permitting we have to do. And then Bill and I, we need to, to square up that easement, which Bill, I think you're you're pretty well done. It's just I got to get Chris Zell up there to do Chris Zell from Vernier Larios has got to give us a, uh, a a description of the easement so that Bill can incorporate that into the easement and get that executed. Is that correct, Bill? Absolutely correct. Okay. Okay. Moving on then, um, lagoon sludge removal. We're, we're doing well. The company's going to come and they're going to pump as much sludge over there as they can. Um, the drainage is looking good, but the weather hasn't cooperated. We, they really haven't. I don't think they've been back since the end of February just because everything was frozen. But I, I expect them back, and in a couple of days, they'll have everything that can be pumped over there, pumped over there, and then we'll have, have it go through that freeze-thaw cycle and see what we get. And once that's clear, that the, the engineering firm is going to come down and look at that, or have they already done yes, that? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, Paul Cabral from CDM and his folks will be down um, to do that. And um, I think he's just waiting for you know the weather to be... I mean, it was 23 degrees up here this morning. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. Uh, the meter audit, Johnson Fulton meter audit. And they finished the small meter audit um, with push, what they call the push pull. Um, some minor issues with it that got resolved on the fly. Um, a couple things could have been.
been done better, but I think overall, uh, most of those issues concerned our workload and what we had to do, and were, were you know, oblivious. Our, our customers didn't really experience any of that. Uh, they got packed up and sent off on Friday, so within a month we should have the results. How many meters did they actually do to you? No, or remember? Uh, you know, I, I don't know. Um, a couple hundred altogether. I think they did, you know, there's 66 or 70 from whatever they had planned to do. Um, they'll look at the results, the testing results, and if they have to do more, they will. But they were, I think they're pretty confident. I think in all, all in all, it was a, you know, Kate might have a better idea, Al, but she's the one who's... That was one of the glitches that they had. They promised us in our pre pre con meeting that um, you know took every morning she'd have what the, the change out meters that were taken out the day before um, because you know we have to manually enter all in, in those new meter IDs for the building process. <coughs> you got to put in the, the old what, what the meter that came out at what the new meter went in at, and so the system can can do the addition. And subtraction when we when we do do build that zone and um, you know it took like five days to get the first day so she got a big slug at once um, and which wasn't how it was supposed to go off but they had some internal issues I guess but um, so I think we're good there okay um, correspondence I have nothing nothing else as far as you know also no, no. Well, we do know, Judy, they did complete those two claims that have been noticed in the insurance company, right? Oh, dear Lord, yes, they did. Um, uh, the one, the claim, refresh my memory, Bill, the one, the one was uh, Mr. Um, Ayuchi. Correct. And basically, it was, in a sense, that he wasn't seeking tremendous damages just to cover costs that... I mean, my opinion is, um, it probably, anyway, it doesn't matter. It was, it was Central Hudson and the Water Department's insurance company split the cost. Nice. I, think, I, think we each, I think we each had to spend maybe $2,500. Precise. Nuisance value. Right. Kind of nuisance value. It wasn't worth fighting any farther on. Because um, the legal costs were just going to, you know, exceed that. And then the other one was the uh, accident on uh, Wilster Island well, 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 Street. Wilster Island Street. Yeah, and those, those, uh, that's been resolved yeah. also. Go ahead. That's been resolved also. Yes, that has been that resolved. Just, so we're, I don't know what the terms and conditions were, but that's been resolved. So I think it was dismissed against the water department, and I think they found against the other driver. What was uh, that? What was that? It was a car that was passing on an icy condition during a flood on the street. There was a water main break, water was flooded on the street, car came down west of Rather Street as a, as. Judy was trying to slow down the traffic. The guy ignored her. One woman ignored her. but passed. He got past the accident scene and slid on ice and hit an oncoming vehicle. And right. they, they sued the other car. They also sued the water department, saying that. Right. And, and the irony. There's of water the on the road, so they sued the water department. Yeah. That was essentially. And it. they did, and it wasn't even our water main that was leaking. It was, it was water, right? It was hospital service letter, and we were just we were just helping them shut it down. It's like the client who had water in their basement after a flood, so she called the water department. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, they were, there were three young girls, and they were, two of them were sisters, and, you know, it just, I don't, I don't think they had a good case to begin with. Right. So, that got dismissed. Or settled, or some, some, some resolution, so we're done. Okay. Um, superintendent's report. Yes, we also want to talk about the paid thing. You're right. We'll do that in executive session. Executive session? Okay. What? Uh, what? Any questions, issues on the superintendent's report? If not, I'll look for a motion to accept. I'll make a motion to accept the superintendent's report. Second. Second to that. Someone. I didn't see it. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> second. Harold. Harold. Second. Those in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. Okay. Uh, I just got a text.
from Peg. She got hung up and she's not going to make it. Okay. Um, executive session, we have. Um, Before we do that, could I give you guys a quick update? Sure. Um, so I had an opportunity um, to have a, a short phone call with um, Bill Rudge from the DEC. Um, as well as Bill McKenna, Supervisor of Woodstock, um, and some individuals from the Woodstock Land Conservancy um, about the sale of Cooper Lake. I mean, Cooper Lake. <laughs> <What do you laughs> uh, be clear. Um, Reservoir 1 and 2. Um, and so that's an ongoing discussion. Judy was kind enough to send me um, uh, the whole history um, going all the way back to at least 2014. Um, so I was able to read the emails back and forth between Judy and Bill and, and the board and, and you know, uh, uh, Bill Rudge at DEC and so it was really insightful for me to kind of hear that. So thank you, Judy. I really appreciate that. Um, but I think what, you know, I took away from the conversation was um, a commitment to work toward um, finding more information out. Um, and so the DEC um, recognized that even back then, um, they didn't really put the full force and weight of the DEC behind investigating this potential purchase, um, but they they assured us that they will now. Um, and that so they're going to look into the purchase. They are. Okay. Um, so they're going to start to do some of the traditional background homework that they would do before um, any sale um, uh, and purchase. Um, and so one of the things that I thought was uh, interesting as well is that. Um, they're really interested in um, having, as they've talked about before, a freshwater fishing lake. Um, and I think Reservoir 1 is a really great prime candidate. Um, is that, am I talking about, that's the one right on Zena Road, right? So that's, that's one. That's the one, and that's, yeah. that's where, the, where they fish now. Yep, and so that's kind of the prime um, interest for DEC. Um, they're less interested, I think, in terms of the, the other properties, um, you know, but they believe that um, you know, there's probably either the town of Woodstock itself or um, other nonprofits that may be interested in some of the other land. And so, um, either way, they want to do more research. Um, and they're, you know, and so they're going to look at look for our help. I think to provide provide whatever we have. Um, but they are interested. And you know, as we kind of go through this process, I told them that the water board would be happy to work with the DEC. Um, and, and you know, as as we move forward. Um, so that was kind of the, the extent we, we promised that we would talk again <laughs> something, um, which I thought was good. Um, and uh, I, I, on an aside, um, and uh, Judy, I can follow up with you when you get back, but um, okay. Bill, just from um, McKenna, is just you know looking for some kind of historical information that probably should be in the supervisor's office, but whenever you have a change of administration, um, things kind of you know, get lost in the shuffle, and so there's some stuff about the dams that he was looking for that we've, I know, probably officially give, have given Woodstock before, um, but we just probably need to maybe resend up to him to kind of keep him in the loop on some things. So we'll talk more when you get back. So it's both Sorry. of the reservoirs, though? Yes. One and two. One and two. Good. So it was a good conversation, so I just wanted to update everybody to that. And, you know, we'll see where it goes. Okay. Thank you. Now we can go into executive session. I have two legal issues to bring to the board, which we can probably need a motion when we come out of it. Okay. So a motion to go into executive session? I'll make a motion. No, sir. Okay, those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. 